Let's build an entire full stack application using AI. A few months ago, I made a video about GPT Pilot and now they have a ton of additional functionality that I'm really excited to show you. Not only can you build full stack applications, sophisticated applications, apps that would take weeks or even months to build. But now the interface is much easier, the agents work much better, and you can actually add features to your application. And the best part is completely open source and free. And thanks to Pythagora for sponsoring this video. Pythagora just changed their name from GPT Pilot. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to install it. And we're gonna install GPT Pilot, the command line interface version. This is the completely open source version. You can use GPT-4, you can use Claude, you can use any open source model that you want, including running it locally. But for today, we're gonna to be using GPT-4. And then after that, I'm gonna show you the VS Code plugin, which is now Pythagora. Okay, enough talk. Let me show you how to install it. First, navigate to a folder that you want everything created in. So I have this one at AI Projects. Then what we're gonna do is clone the repo. So git clone and then the repository URL. And of course, I will drop this in the description below and then hit enter to clone the repo. Then you're gonna CD change directory into GPT pilot like so. And today we're gonna be using VNV to manage our Python environment. I know I usually use Conda, Conda's great as well, but today we'll be using VNV. So Python dash M VNV pilot env. Next, we're gonna do source pilot dash env. So the environment name we just created slash bin slash activate and that's going to activate our environment then you'll know it's active because it'll say so right there in parentheses now if you're on windows it's slightly different and this is what you're going to type instead pilot dash env slash scripts slash activate and i'm on a mac so i don't have to do that but if you're on windows that's what you do next we're going to install all of the requirements very simple, as usual, pip install dash r requirements.txt, hit enter. And it's done. Next, we're gonna cd into the pilot directory within gpt-pilot. So go ahead and do cd pilot and then hit enter. Now we're gonna take the example environment file and rename it to just .env. And that is gonna be our environment file. So mv.env.example space .env hit enter and that should be done. Now open up VS Code and make sure you open the folder gpt-pilot. Within that, there's going to be a pilot folder. Click that and then you're gonna click the .env file right there. And this is where you're gonna enter all your environment information. Now, this is also where you get to choose which large language model you use and provided by which service. So if you wanted to use OpenAI, which we'll be doing today, you're gonna to enter your API key and your endpoint right here. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. So go to your OpenAI account. We're gonna create a new key under the API keys section. Go ahead and click it. And I'm gonna name it pilot underscore YT create secret key. And I'm gonna copy it, and yes, I'm gonna revoke this key before publishing the video. Switch back to Visual Studio Code, and you're gonna enter that API key right there. And for the endpoint, it actually tells you what the endpoint should be right here. So we're just gonna paste that in. Now we also choose the model name right here, so GPT-4 Turbo Preview and Max Tokens. And you can mess around with the Max Tokens. I know that GPT-4 has a much larger context window than this, but I'm gonna leave it as is for now. Open Router and Azure are two other options that it gives you. And I believe all you have to do to use an open source model is spin up something like Olama or LM Studio, and then just replace this OpenAI endpoint with the endpoint that one of those apps gives you. And since they match the completions endpoint by OpenAI exactly, it should just be a drop and replace. And you can also select your database type down here, but I'm gonna leave everything as default. And that does mean that we're using SQLite. Next, we need to initialize the database. So Python db underscore init dot pi, and then hit enter. Okay, and it's done. And last, we're just gonna spin up the application now. So python main.py, and this is where all of the work is gonna be done. So hit enter, and immediately it asks for the project name. Now, something really important to note is if you want to continue with the project that you're working on now, 
this is the command that you use. You pass it an app ID, and this is the app ID right here. So save that in a text file somewhere because we can always come back to it. Now, the reason you might wanna do that is because if this takes, let's say, an hour to go through and you don't have time to do it all in one go, you can easily come back to it. And then you could also continue to iterate on the code even after you're finished. So remember this ID right here. So in the last video, we built an auth application. It was a full stack application, front end and back end, with a database that allows you to register for the app, sign into the app, and store some of your preferences. And again, that was all done with GPT Pilot. Okay, so what I want to build today is a chat application. So two people can chat with each other in real time. And so we'll need a few moving pieces. Obviously, we'll need something like WebSockets or something similar. And we need to be able to enable two different browsers to chat with each other in real time. We're going to be using Node.js for the framework. But other than that, I'm going to let GPT Pilot suggest everything else. So what is the project name? Chat app. GPT Pilot currently works best for web app projects using Node, Express, and MongoDB. Perfect. You can use it with other technologies, but you may run into problems. React might not work as expected. So I am totally fine with this stack. Describe your app in as much detail as possible. All right, so let's try this. I want a real-time chat application where two people can talk to each other through the browser in a live chat-like environment. Each of the users should have a name and the app should store the history of the conversation. You should also allow for emoji use by having an emoji selector in the input box. Each message in the message timeline should be accompanied by a timestamp of the message and who sent it. And I just added messages most recently sent should be at the bottom of the message history. So let's stop there. Let's see what it does. Now it's starting to help me actually refine my idea. So let's start by refining your project idea. Do you want users to be able to create accounts or should they be able to set their name temporarily for each chat session? Since I already did user accounts in the last video, I'm gonna skip user accounts. I want this to be a free for all and anybody can message anything that they want. No user accounts, but users should be able to set their name temporarily. Should the chat be one-on-one -on -one, or do you envision allowing multiple participants in the future? That is a great question. I think I wanna allow multiple participants in the future. So let's allow for multiple participants. Will there be any form of moderation or administration capabilities needed for managing the chat or participants? This is awesome. So all stuff that I didn't really think about when devising the first prompt. So I'll simply say messages can be flagged as spam by anyone and it'll show a flag next to the message. So let's hit enter. Should there be a limit on the number of messages a user can send in a certain time frame to prevent spamming? Great question. So yes, users can send a maximum of 20 messages per minute. Do you require any specific emoji set or is the standard emoji picker sufficient? Standard is fine. So now it's describing my app in more detail. Here it's defining the user experience. This is actually the functional specification, which is great. So we have setting a username, chat interface, emoji support, message history, and spam flagging. Everything that I just discussed with the AI. So I love this. First, it's kind of like working with a product manager. And then we're gonna start working with developers. And all of this is done hand in hand with AI. Okay, so we're gonna stop there. I built a full application in my previous video, which I'll link down below. But for now, what I wanna show you is the VS Code plugin and actually being able to iterate on an existing code base. And you can think of Pythagora and GPT Pilot as your own coding team, not just a single coder. They have a spec writer, they have a reviewer, they have a troubleshooter, they have a developer, and it all all comes in a single package for you and they all work together to build exactly what you need and you can kind of think of it as GPT pilot is the core technology and then Pythagora is built on top of GPT pilot and Pythagora just allows you to do everything even easier and if you use Pythagora you just need to sign up and you get a hundred thousand free GPT 4 tokens okay so open up your VS code and now we're going to iterate on an existing code base so go to your extensions tab 
Search for Pythagora and you're gonna find it right here. This is the logo for it. Sign up for an account, you get 100,000 free GPT-4 tokens by doing that. And that part is completely free. And if you need more tokens, you can easily plug your own ChatGPT API key in there. You can power it using Olama if you want something local, you can even use Claude. But I think the best results you're gonna get are currently from GPT-4. Okay, now on the left side, we're gonna see this little Pythagora tab and this is it right here. And so I have an existing application it's called complex chat app and I'm gonna show it to you really quickly so I have it open right here and I'm just gonna click start app okay now it's started and I go to localhost 3000 and here it is so this is a full stack chat application obviously we can iterate on the design but that is not as important as the actual logic so we go to register I'm gonna register username email and password hit register Okay, registration is successful. Please check your email to verify. So all of this functionality was built out by Pythagora. All right, your email has been verified successfully. Now we're gonna log in and perfect. So in this application, we have a very simple chat interface. So there's a bunch of chat rooms that we can join. Other people can join them. We can chat within them. We can set a password, anything we want. So I already have one, hello. Let's click that, join chat room. And there it is. So let's just test it out. Hi, this is Matt. And then we'll hit send. And there it is. So I have a second user, M. Berman YT. I have the first user, Matt. And that is a basic interaction that you can do with this chat application. Okay, but now the important part. I actually wanna add features to this. All right, so back to VS Code. We have everything loaded up in Pythagora. Look how much code has been written already. All of this, hundreds of lines of code have been written by Pythagora. I did not write a single line of this. All we had to do was work with AI to build all of this, and it already works really well. But now let's add some functionality. All right, so we're gonna add a few features. Let me read it. In user dashboard, avatar URLs are being updated and stored to database correctly. Now I wanna display those avatars in user dashboard below header, dashboard, and above new username field. In dashboard, it should be size 250 by 250 pixels. Avatars should be cropped in a circle. Second thing I wanna add is a sound notification when the message is received in chat for every message in all chat rooms. So I literally just type out in plain English what I want, and now we're gonna work with AI to add these features. So I'll click submit. Now in my previous video, a lot of you asked, how much does this cost? And you were specifically asking about GPT tokens, right? Because if you're using GPT-4, this definitely costs money. I built a full stack application in my previous video, I think it cost about 10 or $12. And probably a lot of you are thinking, wow, that's kind of expensive. But if you compare it to first, the time saved. So if you're a developer and you're building this, imagine how much time you've saved, hours, potentially days. That time is money. Second, if you're not a developer and you actually have to hire somebody else to do this, then you're saving also just a ton of money. So the fact that you can build full stack applications for 10 or $15 is incredibly cheap, insanely cheap. All right, so the first thing it is doing is coming up with a plan. Modify the user dashboard front end to display the user's avatar in public slash dashboard.html, add the image element and so on. So it is describing in detail exactly what I told it to do. Now we can also see the progress right here. This is task one and it's 33% done. Now the developer agent jumps in and starts writing code. So implementing task number one. And now we can see the code changes that the developer is actually suggesting here. Not only do we get the code changes, but we also get explanations of what the code is doing. And in real time, we can actually see the code being changed. So it popped up the style.css because that is the code being changed. All right, now we have the code monkey agent updating the existing code all good. Then the code monkey agent is reviewing the code, review finished. Then the developer agent saves it. Now the code monkey continues. And then at the bottom, we have something called the human test. And that means that it is asking me to go in and actually make sure everything is working properly, just like we did while building the application from scratch. So it tells us exactly how to do this. So number one, start the server using npm start. Now we can do that, or we can simply hit start app right here. Then it says, open up localhost 3000 dashboard. You'll be redirected to the login page if you're not logged in, but we are. 
log in, great. Then on the dashboard page, observe below the dashboard header and above the new username. Expected result, you should see an image placeholder. And then last, if you initially saw a broken image icon or want to test changing the avatar, use the new avatar URL field. Start app, let's come back to our browser. I'm gonna refresh the page. Let's go back to rooms. I'm gonna to go to the dashboard, just like it said, and there is the broken avatar image, just like it said. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a new avatar URL in there, right there, I'm gonna update profile. Okay, and it actually didn't work. So let's debug it with AI together. All right, so I entered a URL for an image to try to update the image, but I don't see the image. All I see is a blank space with the text avatar, but the A in avatar is partially cut off. So. Let's see, I'm gonna paste it in and it'll debug it for me. And now it's gonna ask me some questions to help debug the issue. So what browser and version are you using to access the application? So I'm gonna say Google Chrome version and then paste it in the version number, submit. Can you describe step-by-step step what you did before noticing the issue? So I went to the dashboard page, entered an avatar URL in the bottom of the input box, clicked update profile, and then nothing happened. Are there any error messages in the browser's console? Okay, so let's switch back to the browser. I'm gonna right click, inspect. Then I'm gonna go to console and we're gonna see if there are any issues. So there definitely are a bunch of issues here. However, I'm gonna clear them. I'm gonna refresh the page and I do not see any errors. So I'll just type no errors, submit. Did the URL of the image you tried to set as an avatar start with HTTP or HTTPS? These are great questions. So it's HTTPS. All right, so given the description of the issue and considering there are no error messages in the browser's console, it suggests that the problem might be related to how the avatar URL is processed or displayed on the front end. All right, so it's going to ask me more questions now. After updating the avatar, can you check if the new avatar URL has been successfully updated in your profile details on the server or database? So we can easily do that without actually checking the database. We're just gonna navigate away from this page. Oh, I have to start the app. We'll log back in. I went back to the dashboard page and there is the URL. So it should be loading correctly and it's definitely storing in the database. So yes, it is being stored in the database successfully. When you inspect the element where the avatar should appear using your browser's developer tools, do you see the new avatar URL in the image source? Ah, good question. So I'm right clicking, inspect. Let's see if we see that avatar. So I can actually do view page source and there's the problem. It's not actually linking to anything. So it doesn't actually close off the IMG tag and that's the problem. Okay, so I'm gonna say no, it opens an IMG tag but it doesn't include the URL and doesn't close the IMG tag anywhere. Here's the code and then I just paste it in the code. Submit. Is the issue persistent across different web browsers or only Google Chrome? All web browsers. Okay, so now it's debugging the issue and hopefully it's gonna know what it is because I basically told it what the issue is. Okay, now it's coming up with a plan to fix this issue. Updating the existing file, great. Okay, now it's sending the code for review and the review notes said it looks good, saved the file, updated it, and now it should ask me to try it again. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna start the app again, switch back to this page, refresh the page, and there it is. Perfect, exactly what I asked for. There's the image I provided, plus it's cropped in a circle. Awesome. And then I'm gonna just say continue and then submit. So then it's continuing to build the next feature. All right, occasionally it'll ask you to do this. So it's going to ask you to check the code, make sure it's good. And then if you wanna make any changes, do so. If not, you don't have to do anything. And it also opens the file and highlights the line that you have to look at. So please open the file and line 14, add the required input. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so it's asking me to check this line of code. Okay, input required and it looks fine. So I'm just gonna delete that. I'm not gonna change anything. Now it's asking me to check the code again. So let's see what it's asking me to do now. So step one, log in. You should be redirected to the dashboard page. Then you should see the avatar. So we already checked that, but let's just check it again just in case. So start app, refresh, and there it is. And so I'm just gonna click this continue button right there. Now it is continuing on to the next task. So we're gonna be integrating sound notifications for incoming chat messages in all chat rooms. All right, so it needs human intervention again. Download or select an MP3 sound file that you wish to use as the notification sound. Rename this file to message notification MP3 and manually place it in the public directory of your project. 
So I downloaded it, I renamed it to message notification.mp3 and I'm saving it to the public folder. Back to VS Code, let's continue on to see if it needs me to do anything else and it doesn't. Okay, so everything working, continue. Okay, now it's sending code to review again. So the reviewer agent we can see right there is reviewing the code and the review is finished and we can actually see the code being changed in real time, very cool. All right, so it's done implementing the sound. Now it's asking me to check if it works again. So use npm start. We could just do that by clicking start app right there. Open your browser, log in if you have to, join a global chat room or create a new one. And then we're gonna have to have two browser windows open to test this. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna register a second user, mbermanyt underscore two, register. All right, logging back in, great. So now we should have two separate browsers open two users and we're going to join the same chat room. Let's say this room is called room one. We'll join and create the room. There it is. Now, if I refresh over here, I see room one right there. So I'm going to join it as the second user. So let's type hello. And there it is. The ding worked. If I go over to the other browser, there it is. All right. So there I'll say, Hey, how are you doing? This is the second user. And there's the ding again. Come back over here and there it is. Awesome. So that is how easy it is to add new functionality to an existing application that you build with Pythagora. It really could not be easier. The best part is you work hand in hand with artificial intelligence to build out any functionality. Even if you're building it out from scratch, if you're iterating on existing code, it gives you step-by-step -step questions, how to verify that it's working, how to debug it. It is truly seamless. Thanks again to Pythagora for sponsoring this video. Find the link to Pythagora in the description below. I'll also link their open source project. And if you need any help at all, they are super active in Discord. So check them out there. Again, I'll drop that in the description. If you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.